Welcome to the Running Regressions and ANOVAs in SPSS GLM workshop. This is Karen Grace Martin and I'm so glad you've joined us. In this introduction, I'm going to cover three things. I'll do a workshop overview to tell you what we'll do in each of the modules. Then I'm going to go over the three data sets that we have available. I'm going to be using these in the examples and you can download them on the introduction page so you can use them for the exercises. And then I'm going to give you a very, very brief review of a regression and an ANOVA model and what it means so we know what it is we're analyzing in the GLM. Module 1 is an overview of SPSS's GLM procedure, or General Linear Model. We are specifically going to cover four sections of the GLM in the overview. The main dialog box that opens when you choose the univariate GLM in the menus, the Model button, the Save button, and the Options button. We're starting with these four because they are the most general, and a number of these are actually defaults. You have to have them no matter what you're running. These are the things you're going to need no matter what kind of model you're running, whether it's an ANOVA, a multiple regression, an ANCOVA, if you have interactions, anything. You're always going to need these four sections. We're going to skip some of the other buttons that are available, like post hoc and save, and we'll talk about those over the next couple of modules as we go more specifically into some examples. In module two, we'll start by comparing GLM to the regression procedure and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each and the different options available in both, in both procedures. There are some things you can do in both, but look and are named totally differently. And that can get a bit confusing. So we'll go through that in detail. Then we will run through a few regression examples. First, we will run a regression with some categorical dummy variables. So you can see how those work. And we will run that in both the GLM and regression to see how they differ and how they're the same. Then we're going to add an interaction term to the model. And that's when you start to see where some of the real advantages of GLM come in. Module three will concentrate on an ANOVA model. And we're going to talk about the options and different statements you can choose within the GLM that you would really only use if you were doing an ANOVA. SPSS is so sure, in fact, that you would only use them in a pure ANOVA model that GLM won't let you choose these buttons if you have any continuous variables in your model. It just won't run. So these are the plots, post hoc, and contrast buttons that will only work on a model with only categorical predictor variables. Then, once again, we're going to run through a couple of examples. We'll do a two-way ANOVA, and then another two-way ANOVA, but with a continuous covariate added in. And we'll talk a bit about how to get some of the same output and test the same things you would want to test in a pure ANOVA with those covariates in, without those um, plots, post hoc, and contrast options available. Now, I've split them up this way because this is how researchers think of them, of these different kinds of models as regressions and ANOVAs, and it's mainly because that's how we're trained. If you are in biology or psychology or engineering, you probably learned a lot about ANOVA. And if you're in a field like education or sociology, you probably learn lots about regression because these are the dominant approaches in each field. And I believe the history is that both of these methods were developed independently. And then at some time in the 60s, I believe, some statistician realized it's all the same model. It's literally the same thing. So at the end of this introduction, we'll review the models 
for just a few minutes so you can see why they're really the same.